Hello, 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 and welcome or welcome back. I am so happy to see you guys. Is this the window shopping video that I said I was going to do next? No, no, it's not. Um, I filmed that video, I filmed it, and I wasn't happy with the video, but we're here. This is the one we were going to do next, and we are doing something that it is, I think, high time that we do, and that is ranking the standard edition of Taylor Swift's The Tortured Poets Department. I feel like I have lived with this album. I have had these songs played and replayed. I have had them come up on shuffle and had to make decisions about what I skip and what I re-listen to. I have made decisions about what I like click on first when I put my headphones in, when I want to listen to music and such, when I'm shuffling Taylor Swift, the ones that I keep on, the ones that are on my like condensed playlist of this album, including the anthology and such. And so I feel like I have lived with this album in the forefront of my mind, but also in the background of my mind for long enough to where my ranking isn't heavily influenced by the recency bias. It's still the most recent Taylor Swift album, so there is a little bit of bias in that. But overall, like I said, I feel like I've lived with these songs for long enough to have formed solid opinions of them through listening to them and analyzing them all line by line and lyric by lyric here on this channel with you guys. If you'd like to check that out, feel free. I will link it below. But without further ado, let's get to ranking this album. I had a lot of thoughts about how I was going to do this, whether I was going to rank them based just on like musical merit, my personal taste, or if I was just going to like tier rank them just based on vibes and just like share my thoughts as I was doing it and you could take it as you will. And I just kind of, um, combined all of those and so what I have done is I have gone through and I have ranked all of these just based on my personal thoughts, my personal taste, my personal relationship to the songs and then I have kind of divided that ranking into tiers where I could kind of see the lines were drawn into categories that made sense as a tier ranking for me and then as we go through the list we'll kind of talk about why everything in, is where it is and if I was ranking things based on like I don't know artistic or musical merit and maybe not my own like personal taste if they would be somewhere else. So the tiers that we have to rank these songs within are five. The bottom one is unneeded for me but thank you. Thank you for the content, thank you for the food, thank you for the song. We love it, we appreciate it. Wasn't my thing, wasn't needed for me but thank you, Taylor. Fourth tier is I can appreciate why you're here. It might not be my favorite thing. It might not be for me, but I can appreciate why it was included on the album. I can appreciate why time was put into it. I can appreciate why other people like it. I can appreciate why it was created and is present in this context. The third tier is sort of self-explanatory and it is will return to. These are songs that I will absolutely be returning to and if they come up on shuffle or when I am listening to Taylor Swift then I will probably not skip them. Above that we have on repeat, another self-explanatory one. These are the songs that I have on repeat. These are the ones that I love. If you asked me what songs that I am really into from this album other than like the big name ones, um, these are probably the ones that I would talk about because these are the ones that I'm pulling up and I'm listening to just of my own sheer love of them. And then rising to the very top, kind of above my own taste, above the opinions of a simple girl, we have the Taylor Swift classic tier. And these are songs from this album that I feel have risen to a level of importance in the canon. They are classic Taylor Swift songs in the purest meaning of the word. And I think these are the songs that will survive from this album as like trademark Taylor Swift songs. They are just so very her, they are so well written, and they are just on every facet um, classic Taylor Swift songs that I think will live on in the legacy of this album. Album. I like them, but also more than that, they're like important songs and they're like very like Taylor songs and they contribute in a big way to the Taylor. Also, I do really, really like them. So because I think they are the best. Um, so yeah, those kind of go hand in hand. Anyway, let's get into it. We are going to go from number 16 up to number one from the bottom to the top. If your favorite song is in the bottom or in the bottom tier, do not get upset, do not get hurt. These are my personal opinions and the ones that are in the bottom, especially, I'm going to talk about the most. I'm going to talk about why they're there. I'm going to talk about my relationship with them. And I'm going to talk about if I was ranking this based on artistic merit or based on production value and just like artistry instead of my own personal, you know, emotionally biased opinions, if I would put them somewhere else. So try not to get 
to offend it. Um, although I know it's, it's hard when we're talking about your favorite songs. So let's just get into it. Maybe I shouldn't have gone from the bottom to the top. Maybe that was a really stupid decision to make due to what my bottom pick is. But, and hear me out, my least played, my least favorite song on the standard edition of the Tortured Poets Department is My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. I'm sorry, I don't, it doesn't hit me very hard. It doesn't connect with me as deeply as some of the other songs on this album do. It was never my favorite from the moment I heard it. I like it. I like the beat. I like, and I mean that. Um, I mean that I like the beat. I really just kind of bop to the and the beat of it all. The emotional parts I find in more depth in other places on this album and it's just kind of simple and fine to me. Um, and I like, I just have so many more feelings about every single song on this album than I do this one. And I think they're every single other song on this album I have at least chosen and like hand selected to play because I was interested in hearing it. And I've never done that with this one. I, I don't feel this way about Taylor Swift songs, but I feel like I've heard this song before and not from Taylor Swift. Yeah, I don't know. It's giving like someone who is a one hit wonder. This would be their one hit. Um, and that, and like, and I guess that's my way of saying that I don't think it's bad at all. Like I do let it play um, when it comes up. I don't always skip it, but I think I skip it more than I do the other upbeat songs on this record. And the other ones that I skip, I just skip because they're a fucking bummer. <laughs> um, and I'm just like not in that mood. I'm not in that emotional pacing at the moment, but I will be. My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys is a very, it's a background song for me. The next two to me are also background songs but I like them more. <laughs> it's not in the bottom tier though, because I do get why it's here. My boy only breaks his favorite toys, I think is something that she really needed to say. And this was a metaphor she really needed to get out. I think this was a song she really needed to write and that's great. And I get why it made it onto the album. It's a great title. Um, it absolutely fits. I'm not saying it doesn't fit. The, there's the lyrics, just say when I play again. I I don't know, that lyric just sounds incomplete. It's the, just say when I play again. It's play being the verb is just really unimpactful to me, even though I know it's about playing, it's about toys being someone's plaything. It's not that I can pick anything out that's like awful about it. It's just the lyrics are very simplistic and it really just kind of like, this metaphor only goes so deep, I guess, and she does a good job flushing it out, but there's just better here. There's just better on this album for, for me. Um, and I know there are songs on this album that people think really, really suck that I'm about to rank a lot higher. Um, and that's, and that's fine with me. I stand by that and I know, I know why I'm doing it and other people aren't. I don't know. I guess I'm just comfortable being, being a little freak sitting high atop the kitchen counter. God, I'm the worst. But if you understood that, this is the channel for you. <laughs> so next we have a song that I think is a lot of people's very last one. And it's not the last for me because she, the sheer vibe of it all really hit with me. Some of the lyrics hit with me a little bit more than the ones on My Boy and just found it to be a little more intriguingly different and chill background music that I enjoyed a little bit more than My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. And that is, I can fix him, no really, I can. I think of this song as an interlude. Um, does anyone else get what I mean? It's the I can fix him interlude because it's the transition from I can fix him, no really, I can 
to, well, maybe I can't. And for that reason, we need it here. It's a very important piece of this record. And I really like the kind of cowboy like me bringing it a little bit back to a country twang moment in the mood, in the lyrics. Um, and we have a very kind of like steamy, um, southern smoky romance in a bar um thing um and that's just that's nice i like it i think she does it well i think she pulls it off i think she sprinkles a little bit of the sexiness that she likes to have on this record in there and i think that she mostly pulls that off as well i like this song um and i i don't always skip it you know when i'm not really looking for a specific mood and i'm just listening to music or i'm just listening to taylor um yeah, I, I keep this one because I, I like the imagery that it brings up. I like the smoke cloud billows out his mouth. I like the hands drawing hearts on her face that are calloused from his pistol. I like the, whoa, maybe I can. I like the, but your good Lord doesn't need to lift a finger. Um, I just, yeah, I, I enjoy it personally. And I understand um, if you don't feel how I feel about my last song, why this would be your last song. So Fresh Out the Slammer is another one that just never really hit me in any type of way. And it's so medium paced that if the lyrics don't like suck you in deeply, then like, I don't know. It just, it never grabbed me a ton. I feel like I really need to listen to this one on a drive home from the beach after like being at the beach for sunset in the summer. I do that a lot and I feel like I need to listen to that then because that sounds like the right mood for this just like very kind of vibey, happy but not like overly happy, like a kind of like anticipatory, really it's I don't know it's just there's a, it's hard to define the mood of this song and I feel like it the only one that I can compare it to is rose colored lenses I listen to that one a lot like when I'm just kind of feeling okay not particularly hyped not particularly melancholy just kind of vibing I listen to um Violet Chemistry and Rose Colored Lenses by Miley Cyrus a lot. And I feel like maybe I need to add this to that playlist and maybe like the to the On the Way to the Beach playlist, just kind of like a vibey summer, neither here nor there mood. And maybe this one will grow on me because I know, I know people like this song a lot. It just never really hit me in a way that all the songs above it do. If we were ranking based on like song merit and production, this song would be four slots higher. So moving up to will return to, these are ones that I more than understand why they are here. I will also probably return to them um, and I have chosen to return to them. I have put on my headphones and I have clicked play and I said, you are the one that I want to listen to. Um, it just definitely hasn't been as much as the ones in the tier above this that are on repeat. The title track, sorry, I adjusted um, the angle because I didn't like how the lighting was. I enjoyed this song when I first heard it. When I listened to this, I was like, okay, yeah, that was a fine title track. I liked it. Um, definitely not among my favorite title tracks because overall, once I've sat with this song, what I've discovered is that I really, I do like the lyrics of the song and that's what people make fun of her for. Um, they really make fun of her for the lyrics and like the like painstaking specificity in this song that sometimes I think comes across as a little clumsy but I just read it maybe I am just a very cringy artist you know um, and I read it very much as a poem and I do think it really does a good job of being a very clear thesis of a relationship at a point in time. And so that's why I absolutely understand why it's here. I absolutely understand why it has the title it does. I understand its place on this album and I think it's important. Um, the verses, like I said, I really like the lyrics and I like the specificity. And so I am a fan of the verses in this song. I actually found I'm not a huge fan of the chorus. I find it a little boring and a little repetitive once I've sat with it. The Dylan Thomas, Patti Smith thing, that's one place where I do agree with everyone and I find the specificity of the lyrics to come across as a little bit 
clumsy and a little bit forced in and not because she doesn't find a way to make it work with like kind of the beat. I guess it's just that that reference was something that like a lot of people really had to look into and figure out and it's just kind of something that maybe was too much her not relatable enough to everyone else and I think that maybe is what's wrong with this song in general is that like maybe it's just people not quite getting the picture that she was painting or getting the specific things that she pulled from their relationship in their life and I appreciate this song because I do see that and I like it it's just not my favorite song ever and like I coming in at number 12 is maybe a controversial edition I can do it with a broken heart. I love this song. I don't really skip this song very much. It just kind of, it bops on. It's just like a little bit a lot um, when you're not necessarily ready for it. Um, it's a little bit repetitive and it's just a very specific feeling. And so I put this on when I am not, not, not feeling it whatsoever and I need to be feeling it. Um, and there's no real motivation that I can find. Like I have songs that will motivate me towards like a specific end, um, towards a specific mood. I put this on when I'm like, I have nothing. I just really need to be awake right now and I'm not. Um, it doesn't really like connect with me super deeply like I thought it would when I saw this song title. Um, but I really, I really like it. I have fun with it. I think it's clever. I love the lyrics. I love how she performs it on the Eras tour. Um, they're just ones I guess that I just like connect with and like emotionally vibe with um, and like I'm desperate to hear the lyrics of again. But I, I like this one. It wants to do one thing and it does that one thing exceptionally well and in my opinion like nails it. So Long London. I can actually appreciate why this is a track five. I will be talking about that in another video that I have coming up about the Tortured Poets Department era um, and like this era of the era's tour and such. I am an enjoyer and an appreciator of this song. It is just kind of a mega bummer and so like it's not a song for necessarily every day but if I am in a neutral enough mood to not get bummed out by it or I'm looking to be bummed out by it, yeah, like it, it vibes along and I really, really like the lyrics. I think they're really strong. I loved going through them um, when I analyze the lyrics of this album and I definitely will be returning to it, no question. Definitely identify with the people that I see online who are like, justice for So Long London, like So Long London Stan. Um, I feel like people were somehow, like they were underwhelmed by this song um, because I feel like this song isn't very exciting to them. Um, and. I feel like what this song is about isn't very exciting and I feel like this song, again, I feel like this song accomplishes what it set out to do really, really, really fucking well. Um, I feel like this song has a purpose and it really fulfills that place of explaining what happened with the London boy. She tells you why she said so long London. She goes through the breakdown of the so long um, and why it was so long and how that hit her. And it's literally called So Long London and So Long London. Like it's, it's so good. It's so good. I just necessarily don't always play it on repeat um, because it hurts a little bit, um, but it's great. <laughs> and if you don't see why it's great, I encourage you to delve into the lyrics a little bit more. And the intentionality of the tension and the plotting along of the production and the places in which it picks up and such. We move up to the on repeat category with Florida. I am an appreciator of this song. I am absolutely in the minority in that and I understand. Um, I am a mellow, dramatic bitch. I am a Florence fan. I am a Lana fan. Like what can I say? This song is very much my vibe um prescriptively songs that sound like this tend to appeal to me again i'm a big lana fan and so there's just something about on serious melodrama that i can very easily hop on board with and actively enjoy hopping on board with i'm a fire sign a gemini moon and scorpio rising and so this song makes sense to me i also lived in florida for a little bit and i do to a point I kind of get what she's talking about. There's a very like 
it's just easy to kind of like get drunk and go to the pool and go to the beach and sweat and be in a bathing suit in Florida and like not not think about or worry about anything else if if you can find a way to do that if you can help it that's not necessarily what I was doing when I was living in Florida but there were nights I participated in it and there are definitely people who I saw while I was participating in it who were doing it every day it was very clear this was their lifestyle um so yeah, for, for multiple reasons, I, I really do like this song and I actually had considered having it higher, um, but I can understand why the production is just not for everybody and I can understand why it would have been better, but there are just, there are so many things I really, I like about this song and I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> My reaction got like so bad from YouTube shorts and TikTok and so I took it down, but it was very explosive because I very much enjoyed the song. Um, if you'd like to see it, it is still in my reaction video of this album. Um, I think I reacted the most violently <laughs> to this song of all of them. Um, and so as a girl with a sunroof, it's just really important for me to drive around with the song playing this summer with my windows down. Um, yelling Florida and I think that everyone at the Miami shows I think it's really important that you learn the words to the song um because you are going to receive it on piano and I'm going to hate each and every one of you for it and so you better sing along with her you bitches you better be there to support Florida because I'm going to be so upset and so happy <laughs> that each and every one of you got to experience that because it's going to be beautiful I don't feel like Florence is going to be there but what if she is down bad is just it's a bop it's a vibe I, what what more what more do i need to say everyone loves this song taylor loves this song she knew it needed to be in the tour even if it was just like just a little snippet so you could have like an amazing this amazing spaceship moment it is a vibe that is so easy to vibe to the lyrics support that vibe so well it is easy to sing it is easy to listen to but also the lashing out of the fuck it i can't have him and the hyperbole of i might just die it'll make no difference but like the hurt of the waking up in blood it's just there are so many things that are just so easy to like she takes the dramatic thoughts in your head and she says them out loud and she makes you feel like you are not the only one that has thought those things and it feels that way sometimes um and she doesn't apologize for it and like makes you feel so seen and she's doing that here but it's also like just such a vibe and such a bop and so relatable and like ugh, this song is so good this song is so good and then there's an alien metaphor in that and the only reason is this even i feel like this is so low for a song this good and it's just because once we go up from here the songs that are higher are either taylor swift classics or they're carrying something even heavier with them other than like all of the things that i just talked about that this song brings to the table and that's saying a lot um so who's afraid of little old me i understand that this song is long i understand that this song could have been workshopped more to be maybe a little bit more intricate maybe a little bit more condensed but she did this one all by herself and she wanted to and she loves it the way it is and it is on the album assumingly the way she wants it to be and i support her for that would i like to see what that kind of um fine-tuned condensed version of it looks like sure but you know she has a much more supportive fan base now and so now we are getting all too well 10 on the first try um and personally that's fine with me i know that there are people who are much more music criticky who that is not fine with i enjoy the vibe of this song i am at my heart a musical theater kid i am an actor and i just love all of the dramatic moments in this song taylor's musical theatering so hard in here and i i salute her for it i am here for it i we rise as the musical theater community for this song and for performance of this song on the tour and so i simply can't ignore that when this song comes on i make the choice whether or not we are going to be performing it um because i cannot listen to this song without at least performing it a little bit reason it has risen into this slot in the on repeat tier now at halfway through we finally get to the first single and fortnite 
has really grown on me so much. I stand by, I talked about this song for so long in my analysis video and I stand by every single thing. I said still, I like this song and I will keep playing it when it comes up because I, I really skip, it's just so easy to listen to. I always have a good time and I always end up at the end just going really hard to move to Florida, buy the car you want, another Fortnite lost in America. I love hearing Posty do that. I love hearing Taylor echo it. I love the, the back and forth echoing. I've loved it since um, Exile and then I went back and I realized that I loved it in the last time too but I was just too young for that song when it came out to appreciate it and so I never saved it um, or bought it because I was actually buying things on iTunes when Red came out but that's it's not um, what this is about but I really love it here. I have nothing to say um, about the new remix, literally nothing. Um, I will be listening to the original version here forward and I don't don't see myself stopping. The alchemy. This song comes on and I go brain dead. Um, I there's just you look inside my skull and there's just a flat line. There's nothing going on. There's just this song playing and it's playing from my brain all the way through my entire nervous system, throughout my cardiovascular system, just my entire being. This song is just echoing off the wall. We've just short out. There's nothing occurring. Um, it's the same thing that happened when. I was like a teenage girl and I heard One Direction for the first time. I lie, it's not when I heard One Direction for the first time. It was when I heard Midnight Memories for the first time. And for many times after that. That like glitter pop um, girly part of me just absolutely like rises up and shorts out and we're just we're present and we are screaming, touch down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team. Ditch the clowns, get the crown, baby, I'm the one to be. Like I am so seated <laughs> for this song. I don't know what it is. There's just something in it that hit me like white wine. And I keep saying that about this song and I'll never stop um, because it just sort of, and it continues to have that effect as I listen to it. Um, much like white wine, you know, every time still a good time and I predict that I will still be saying that about this song a few years on. Rounding out the on repeat tier we have an icon guilty as sin. This one took a minute to grow on me but when it did boy did it grow. I was slowly when I did the analysis for this song it had already started growing on me but then as I analyzed it I was like this song is just like one after the next like it's the lyrics are so perfect and so specific from one to the next. I really just eat up and enjoy every single line. I really like the vibe and the beat of this song. It is music to my ears. The lyrics lay on top of it so, so well. I love the journey of it. I just, I see it. I see the vision, Taylor. I see what you did here and I am loving it. I'm seated for it and I am bopping along to it every single time it comes on. There's nothing I would love to do more than scream what if he's written mine on my upper thigh in a crowd. I just feel like there's something very like whaley about that line. I feel like I feel like just in terms of the order of the track list with the exception of but daddy I love him this song is where this album really takes off like in the order of the track list. Um, if you're listening to the album from top to bottom I feel like Guilty as Sin is where the album really really um kind of like goes up for launch and takes off. So we've arrived at the Taylor Swift classics tier. These are my top songs on the album and these songs I just feel like are instant Taylor Swift classics. I feel like these songs will be remembered and referred back to over the years as um, songs that people remember Taylor Swift making um, because of the impact that they had and because of how freaking good they are. And number four coming in as the first one in this tier is LOML or Llama as it's come to be known. This song is a incredibly strong Taylor Swift ballad. She has been known for being good at those since her first album Cold Is You, notable um, first track five. 
was I think her first foray into saying that she could do an absolutely heartbreaking um, painful ballad um, even though I feel like that song lyrically was very simple I feel like what she said made a really sorrowful deep cutting impact and I feel like she continued to follow that up with songs like Last Kiss and All Too Well and and I think LOML is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful evolution of that. I love the piano. I wouldn't want absolutely anything else here. Um, I think Lover is also included in that list. I know that that's a falling in love song, but just in terms of the slow, really reaching deep into your heart, whether that be on the positive or negative side of the emotional spectrum, I feel like LOML really stands on its own as making a really clear emotional impact of feeling what this relationship was and what that loss felt like and the hole in someone's in the timeline of her life um and i i feel it so clearly when i listen to it it hurts so bad and i think about the people who be the loss of my life and it go it's just it's a lot um but I appreciate it so 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 very much for what it is I don't know that's how I feel about Last Kiss too I love 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 that song but I don't listen to it constantly um because that's rough <laughs> this one I do listen to and that is Clara Bow I am among the Clara Bow stands I think this song is so incredibly well written and I again I go through it in my analysis video but I think that this song talks about so much and it doesn't comment on it because this song is the comment the way she says things the words that she picks Taylor Swift when she wants to choose her words carefully is so good at doing so and I believe wholeheartedly that this is a song in which she did that Stevie Nicks, Full Eclipse, Half Moonshine. That's, they're so, it makes no sense, but it makes perfect sense because those are all words that align somehow with Stevie Nicks as well as the overall like world engaging impact of a star like Stevie Nicks, like Taylor Swift, like Clara Bow, etc. And it's just all the way through this song, she so carefully picks her words and she does it in order to portray her commentary on the things she's talking about in this song and it is the most poetic beautiful evolution of a song like the lucky one from red i feel like this is the lucky one from a girl who has gone through her career who has gone through 1989 reputation who has gone through the musical evolution of writing folklore and evermore of writing to tracks from the careers of the national and being through and moving through the industry in her own way and of her own accord and having that experience and rising to the place that she has and now she's in a place where she can say something completely different um, from her own perspective and not looking through at someone else's like she was on Lucky One um, and I think it's really beautiful and she does it really poignantly and with a lot of grace and intelligence and cleverness um and uh, clever taylor is my favorite is one of my favorite taylors and i think she's definitely present on this album she's definitely present on this song our number two song in the taylor swift classics tier is the smallest man who ever lived you know we saw the title and we said what is that and it delivered it another song that i think had a very clear vibe a very clear intention to it and i think really really accomplishes it and i really love um this song and i think the black dog have very just kind of different um vibes and different sort of production styles to them that i really like they kind of mix a soft emotionalness with a real anger and bitterness and intensity and a ripping off and shirking off of an old relationship and just pulling someone that you really 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 love out of your skin and the pain of that but the need to do it sorry there's this like crack in my wall and i keep looking at it and it's like this black circle and so I keep thinking it's a bug out of the corner of my eye and so I think once again this song is just word to word wonderful and such an experience to go through and to listen to I love how she does it on tour 
an instant classic. <laughs> there, there's really not much more to say. And number one, I put this song as number one the first time I heard it on my ranking and it has stayed there because it is just so, it is the Taylorist Taylor Swift song that I think we've heard in a long time. This is Taylor Swift, Taylor Swifting as hard as Taylor Swift possibly can. And it is in, but daddy, I love him. It's like, I keep forgetting this song is on the album because it is such a separate thing in and of itself. This song is a phenomenon in and of itself. This song could have been released as a piece <laughs> alone. Um, not only because it's so long, but just because it's so <laughs> Taylor Swift. What I say when I mean Taylor Swift is Taylor Swifting as hard as she possibly can in this song, I mean that there are multiple layers of things that are classic to Taylor Swift. Being very clever and specific and pointed with her lyrics, but also just vague enough to where like there's plausible deniability. There's not a lot of plausible deniability in this song, but it's just, it's just there. She's clever, she's funny, she's biting, she's poetic, she has an entire beautiful imagery filled story. Like this song is just chock full of all of the things that we love about Taylor Swift and she is serving them to us on a silver platter. Um, I heard the live instruments and I was so automatically engaged and then like just the kind of like outdoors um, kind of free country ish vibe. I'm not saying this is a country song, but you know what I mean? Like there's vibe to the stage performance um, of just kind of like an outdoor wedding when they're all clapping and the group celebration of it all that I feel like we haven't seen from Taylor in quite some time. I don't feel like we've seen this kind of sound from Taylor in a little bit and I really, really enjoy it. I love that we're back to the love is a car idea. I will never tire of that from Taylor and I think she does it super, super well here. I love the idea of hair whipping in the wind and cars being gassed through fences, um, but also the very meticulous narrative of the Maddie Healy drama and her relationship with her family and the press and media and the talking, talking, talking of it all and the judging, judging, judging and the stay away from her and she's our girl and don't touch her Taylor of it all. It's just so wonderfully laid out and so poetically spoken and I love every minute of it. And even if I don't always have it in me to listen through this entire song if I'm not like in the mood, if I don't have the energy to fully engage with it. Um, it's kind of like all too well 10 minute version. I don't always play that song because I'm always not I'm not always present enough to engage with it and I like it too much to just let it play on in the background. It feels like a disservice to All Too Well 10. It feels like a disservice to But Daddy I Love Him. And so the only time that I will skip this song if it comes up is if I just, I'm really in like a background music mood and I just can't really be there for it in the way that it demands. And I love that she runs in the big dress. She knew, she knew she had to and she did and I'd like to think that she wanted to. And and I love that she yells, I'm having his baby. No, I'm not, but you should see your faces. She says you should see your faces to us on stage over and over again, as is her right. And this song is an instant Taylor Swift classic. Whether you like it or not, it is a Taylor Swift classic because it is the heart hands. It is the stomping, dancing around in the cowgirl boots. It is the, I was driving to your house in the middle of the night. I'm the one that makes you laugh when you know you're about to cry. One, two, three, let's go, bitch. It is Taylor Swift lore. Um, It is Dear John. And I'm not saying that like it's as ingrained into the fandom, you know, it's still new but when we look back at this era i think this is something that we're going to remember from this era we are going to remember i'm having his baby no i'm not but you should see your faces just as we remember her heartbeat from you're losing me fighting in only your army front lines don't you ignore me i glared at you with storms in my eyes we remember specific things from each era and i think but daddy i love him is clearly going to be the number one that we remember from this era along with its company within this tier.
Okay, we did it. That is my personal ranking of the standard edition of the Tortured Poets Department as I listen to it and as the songs kind of jive with me and fit with me in my life, in my emotional state, in my fandom of Taylor Swift. Um, you are absolutely not obligated to agree with any of this. Please let me know how you like and interact with any of these songs, um, kind of separately from the super analytical, specific um, lore point of view. I feel like now that we've kind of done that, this is kind of nice to just talk about like how we've been vibing with these songs in our lives and like our personal opinions of them and how we feel like they are going to go down in our own Taylor Swift playlists and in the playlists of the Taylor Swift fandom in general. So definitely let me know what you thought about that and what you thought about my ranking and my categories here and what you would put where and what you would shift around. We are well on our way to analyzing and ranking the anthology. I just have some videos that I wanna do before that and I also kind of wanted to give my brain a break analyzing these songs. I wanted to live with them for a little bit before I dove back into like Twitter gel pen analyzing them because that's just very much um, and I wanted to make sure that I had time to enjoy them and they didn't just feel like work to be going through and analyzing. So I will definitely see you guys very 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 soon with another one. It will likely be my Tortured Poets Department era unpopular opinions. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Thank you so, 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 so very much for being here. I appreciate each and every single one of you. I do see each and every like, each and every view, each and every comment, and it makes an impact. And so thank you very much. If you did make it to the end of this video, thank you so freaking much. And please give it a like if you did like it. It means the absolute world to me and helps me a ton here on my little journey here on the platform. Feel free to follow me on TikTok if you would like to see more Taylor Swift content and content that's just it's similar to what I do here just in short bite-sized pieces um and it's different than what I post on YouTube shorts there's different things there than are on here because the ones that are here really mostly relate to the videos that I do here because they're kind of connected anyway thank you so so very much for being here subscribe if you'd like to see more and my next video and all of the ones that have come before this there is plenty back there feel free to check it out and thank you for being here again I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Mwah.